All right. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh of God, that come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it, is, that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, and he knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Two spirits. Two spirits in the world. We're, we're so fleshly, and we don't teach this enough as we learn the Bible. We have to understand that there is spirits in the world. God said that there is spirits in the world. And if we're going to believe God, then we got to believe God. He says there's spirits in the world. And at the end, he says there's two spirits in the world. One spirit of truth, which is of God, and one spirit of error. Amen? Now, if, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody at the sound of my voice is not smart enough to understand the world. We need to start understanding that the spirit world is bigger than the physical world, right? When Paul gets a glimpse of heaven and he sees the spiritual world, he acknowledges how much more vast the spiritual world is than the physical world. And I say this because there's always spirits trying to move us away from God. Because who has dominion over this world? Satan, right? If you believe in God, you got to believe in Satan, right? We got to quit ignoring those spirits because we have spirits that come to us from God and we have spirits that come to us from Satan. We, In the same sense, we have Cain and Abel, right? We spoke of that. But look what he says in one, believe it, believe not every spirit, okay, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, they haven't just gone out into the world to be in the world to, to go and inherit the bodies of the men and women that are outside of the church, but if I wanted to have big influence, where would I have it at? Huh? Inside the church over here, anybody else? If I wanted to know about the NFL, is it better for me looking outside in or inside out? Inside out. If I wanted to know about Waterburger, Planet Fitness, if I wanted to know all I, I could know about Planet Fitness, Courtney, would I do it from as a member or do it as a person that works there, an employee? An employee. Okay. So Satan is very smart. Amen. He Amen. knows the Bible better than most of us, if not all of us. Probably all of us. I agree. I just don't want to step on anybody's toes that thinks they know the Bible pretty well. But again, he does. So if he's going to infiltrate the people of God, where is he going to do it from and have the greatest advantage? The church. The church. The ch Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. You're welcome. We got a little connection working today. Good. The church. He's going to do it from inside the church. And we have to be careful with religion because a lot of times we get caught up in religion and everything that the preacher said that's bad is outside of the church. And everything that the preacher said that's good is sitting inside the church. Well, that's there's a reason for that. And the reason is this. The people inside of the church are tithing. <laughs> They're, they're paying my salary. I mean, they're, they're making me rich. The people outside of the church, what are they doing? They're staying outside of the church. So we have these false prophets already in the world. Even in this Bible time, we have these false prophets outside of the world. The only way we can discern these prophets or prophetess, because there are some females, is if we look at the word of God, we study the word of God, and we screen the things that someone says by the word of God. Amen? And that's what we're doing in this Bible study. Religion, and, and I, I asked a couple of people today, I'm not going to put anybody on blast. One of the young ladies is going to start coming to the Bible study next week, so I don't want to put her on blast. But I asked about where she's at as far as her knowledge of God. And oh, 
Same thing, we go to church, so forth, so on. There's several coming next week, so you don't know which one. Uh, but I'm having to do two things here because me and my son's having our, our deal over here that we have. But again, I asked, oh, well, I go to this particular church and I don't want to put that church on blast because it's right here in San Antonio and my son's going to have to edit that before he puts it on YouTube, so I don't want to have to go on YouTube with that. But again, she says she goes to this church. I said, well, how much do you know about the Bible? And what do you think the answer was? Not much. Not much. Thank you. Not much. Thank you. Not much. Right? We can go to church a long time and we can sit in the pews a long time and we can get one, one little piece of Bible and he'll preach on that for two or three weeks or they'll preach on that for two or three weeks. Some uh, of the ritualisticness of some religions they preach the same thing. I can go to almost every church at a certain time of the year. Believe me, I did. I, I was in the church. I was knee deep in the church. I can go the same time of year around Easter. I can tell you what verses they're preaching on at almost every church, even the Catholic church. I can go in the summertime and they're, they're always preaching on tithing and verses that have to do with tithing in the summertime, right? The resurrection at Easter, Tithing at summertime. Why do you think they preach tithing at summertime? People got money to spend. No, because people are people are going out and doing everything but coming to church. The weather's nice. We're going skiing. We're traveling. We got we to <laughs> plan for a vacation. So the pastors have to remind people to tithe to the church because there's so many other distractions. Amen? Mm -hmm. and sure. we, get into, we get into... The, the, the New Testament scriptures of Matthew after that in the fall, which leads us up to the, the Jesus Christ ministry, right? Which gets us to Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's a circular event in the church every year. And if, if, if you, like I said, you have to be in that process of behind the curtains to see it. But if you've sat there long enough in a church, you'll see that same cyclical cyclical cycle happen and we're not learning we're not teaching the congregants of the church we're just sitting there entertaining them not hurting their ears not convicting them of their sin we're entertaining them with the music that comes on and the choir and everything sounds good and we get in the mood of of, of worship and we're worshiping praise and worship singers all that thing is great but if you're not learning the word then you're going to be deceived. It's easy for me to deceive you if you don't know the word. If you didn't know and we didn't advertise at Planet Fitness and you came in and Courtney said, hey, your membership is $50. How do I know it's not $50? Courtney just got 40 bucks richer right there. <laughs> Courtney made 40 extra bucks that day, huh? Finesse. Courtney's not mad at that. Right there. Courtney says you're not mad at that. That's good. That's, that'll work. So, so, I mean, if, if it's so easy to deceive in the worldly things, how much more easy is it to deceive in the spiritual things if we don't know? Right? I just said Jesus is the name of God that was inherited by Christ. That's why he has the title of Christos or King. He's not King of King and Lord of Lords, but he's King and he's the Lord. But you see, when David's at my Lord, right? The Lord, my Lord, two different Lords, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all might know what I'm talking about. The Lord said to my Lord, the Bible says, right? The Lord said to my Lord. That's two different Lords. The Lord said to my Lord. My Lord being Christ, the Lord being God. Amen? The Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand till I make the earth your footstool. Does that sound familiar? To, to, to you that have been in church. The Lord said to my Lord, sit here. He's talking to Jesus. The Father is talking to the Son and he says, sit at my right arm until I make the world your footstool. Until, In other words, everybody's going to be beneath you. Amen? Even though you're flesh and their flesh, and I make them flesh and you flesh, I dwelled in you, but I'm going to make them your footstool, and you're going to be the king. 
You're going to be represented as a king or my might or my majesty. And we're going to do that Bible study too. It's called the right arm of the Lord, which was Christ. Amen. That's the might, majesty or the might of God and what he used to reach out and bring us all back to him. Amen. Make sense? Amen. I just put it together for you. Man, we roll the whole spirit working today. Luke 1, Luke 1, Luke 1, 31. It's trying to give us understanding. Luke 1, 31, 39. Luke. Luke 1, Luke 1, 39 through 45. 39 through 45. You want to read, bro? You don't have it? I got it. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from her from the Lord. All right. Two things I want us to, to, to remember, highlight for yourself, go back and study, meditate on these two things. One, the Holy Spirit came on who? Elizabeth. Or it came on the baby. The baby. And, and, she, and Elizabeth was what? Was it on her or in her? It filled her. Thank you. Filled. It was in her. The Holy Spirit was. This is one of the few times we see in the Bible that the Holy Spirit was in someone besides the prophets. But it was in her, and, and as it was in her, she was able to understand who she was dealing with, right? She was able to understand that, uh-oh, uh, someone, Mary's coming to me, and Mary has something very special in her. What was that? Christ. The Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Not big Jesus, little Jesus. But Jesus Christ, right? And, and the only way she was able to discern that was the indwelling of the spirit, right? The same thing for the church. The way we discern good from evil or truth from error is from the indwelling of the spirit. If the spirit is not in that religion or in that church, you're not going to discern. That's why you have homosexuals at the front of the church. That's why you have blasphemers at the front of the church. That's why you have adulterers at the front of the church. Because there's no indwelling of the Holy Spirit at the head of the church. So the church is not discerning error. Does that make sense? We have to have the Spirit to indwell and to, to understand error. But let's go to 45. That's the other thing I want you to see. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from God. If a man or a woman gets in front of you and say, God said, and this one we said the Lord said, then there has to be a performance of that thing. That's one way we can screen false prophets. If I come and say, hey, Donald Trump is going to win the election. I think Biden's the president, right? I told y'all last time, go on YouTube and look at all these evangelical preachers and, and, and all these other preachers in the church that came up and said, God said Donald Trump was going to win. Was there a performance of that thing? Huh? Anybody disagree? Was there a performance? Did Donald win? No performance of that thing. So if there's no performance of that thing, that's a clue. That's called a clue. There has to be a performance of that thing. Anybody have anything else they want to add to that? All right. Now we're back where we're supposed to be. Luke 1, 67. We're going to just move over a little bit in the same page. Anybody want to read 67 through 80? Yeah, Luke 67 through 80, same chapter. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Bless the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, 
perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore unto our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of the shoeing of the Israel. Amen. Again, we see Luke talking, New Testament. This isn't the Old Testament. So Luke knew what Jesus had told him to do. Luke walked with Jesus. And if Luke had got a different message, he'd have gave us a different message. But he did give us a different message. So let's look at Luke. And let's look at, start at 68 there. We, we know that Luke was what? He was also filled with what? Spirit. That's God. He had God in him, right? Holy Spirit is just another title for God. God is a spirit. And being that it's holy, capital H, you'll see that all through the Bible, capital H, that means that spirit is God. Amen? So he was filled with God. 38, uh, 68, blessed be the Lord of God, Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. How did he visit and redeem his people? That's a whole nother Bible study. But how did God visit and redeem his people? Mm, he didn't say he's hitting anybody. He said he visited through the spirit that was in Christ. Right. I just want to make, because I, I have to give them separation because as we grow in this Bible study, I want, I want everybody to be able to identify God and Christ. You're a little bit advanced, so. Oh, oh, your horses. Don't get too far ahead of everybody else. I, I, I'm trying to talk so that they can get understanding as we go through the Bible study. And I want you to understand when you see Holy Spirit, that's capital H, that's God, right? And he filled Zechariah, and he was a prophet of God. Prophet is another word for messenger. Amen? Messenger. A lot of people hear that oh, word yeah. prophet, and they get, they. Well, go ahead, John. Oh, no, I'm saying yes, that's true. It's another word for messenger, basically. We hear the word prophet, but if we, if we are out teaching the word of God, just like Zechariah was, from the truth of God and not from error, guess what that makes you? A prophet or a prophetess, right? Because you're teaching the word of God. The message is the word of God, which is the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, prophets. And if you're teaching it according to truth and not according to error, then you're a prophet. If you're teaching it according to error, then you're a false prophet, right? Moving forward. 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, small h, you see the small h there, holy prophets, which have been since the world began. We've had prophets in the world. Actually, Adam was a prophet because who taught Eve? Adam, the ways of God, since the world has begun. And then we go down to 72, to perform. Here we go. There has to be a performance. Remember we said over in verse 45, there has to be a performance to perform the mercies promised to our fathers and to re remember what? His holy covenant. His, who's his? God's holy covenant. What's his holy covenant? The commandments, not the law of Moses. He's not, Luke is not worried about that. That was fulfilled by Jesus already by this point in the Bible. But you, he, he, do, he does want you to remember something. And if Luke is telling you, a messenger from God is telling you to remember something, then you need to highlight that because it's important. And he's telling you to remember his holy covenant. Amen. There's a reason why. I've showed you a, a couple of times in Bible studies because the remnant church is going to be doing two things. What are they going to be doing? Keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ and the commandments of God. So Luke is reminding the church of this. Amen? So we go to, uh, let's go to the bottom of 74 here. I'll do the whole thing. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Again, being a messenger for God to the lost. You got somebody in your life that don't know God. You go to them. You tell them about Jesus Christ. You tell them about keeping the commandments of God. You're being a messenger. 
in holiness, righteousness before him all the days of our life. That's what everybody in the body of Christ is supposed to be doing. That's why this is a teaching ministry and, and not so much a preaching ministry. Amen. We preach to the world. We teach the church so they can go into the world and not become of the world. Right. Keep going. 76. And thou, child, shall be called the prophets of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. That's what you do. When you go out and you teach someone truth, you're going before the face of God. Why? Because God's a spirit. He's everywhere. He says, if you make your bed in heaven, he's there. If you make your bed in hell, he's there. He's everywhere. He fills in every space. So every time we go and we do something for the kingdom, you're going before the face of the Lord. Amen? 77, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. So I have to tell you, you're sinning. The Bible says sin is what? Transgression. The transgression of what? The law. the law. So if I don't tell you about the law, if I don't tell you about the covenant, if I don't tell you what the Ten Commandments are, that's why you hear me say it so much, then I can't acknowledge your sin and I can't convict you of your sin. Right? See how that works? Everybody good? False prophets will never tell you when you're sinning. They'll tell you when you're not tithing, but they won't tell you when you're not sinning. I'm just picking on church right now, so forgive me. But again, we have to tell people when they're sinning so we can get conviction. And then 79, to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Who is peace in the Bible? Jesus Christ is the way of peace. And he performed those things of peace in the flesh, flesh and blood, not spirit. The spirit was in him, just like the spirit should be in the church. The spirit should be in you. The spirit should be in me. It was in him. And he performed those things that God wanted him to perform. And, and they weren't of the flesh. Nothing he did was of the flesh. What do you say? Everything that I do is of who? My father, the big J, big J. All right. I'm about my father's business. Everything that he did for us in the flesh was directed by the spirit. I just love just saying I don't, know about that. I don't think you have a problem with me calling that. Call just, that. Just, right. know about that. Here we go. Let's go to Titus. Titus. And Titus always hides from me. Titus. Anybody get there? You can read if you want to read Titus. Titus 1. Titus 1, 10 through 16. <laughs> Titus 1, 10 through 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Hold on to that. Whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy looser's sake, we're going to get into that. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said that Christians or Christians are always liars, evil beasts, not Christians, I'm sorry, Cretans, Cretans uh, beasts, slow bellies. These witnesses is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in their faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they, sh they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, disobedient to something, we'll get to that, and unto every good work reprobate, right? So we see Titus, the prophet, talking to us. And we see here a warning against false teachers. Verse 10, for there are many unruly vain talkers and deceivers, especially them of the circumcision. I don't want you to miss that. Back then when Titus was talking, the circumcision was who? The Jews. Not just the Jews. Who was the circumcision? The church. The church. Which the church. The people that were about God's business, that were supposed to be representing God's way. Right? The way of peace. The way of Christ. So he's saying, for us, as we fast forward to the New Testament, that we're circumcised too. Why, why, why do you say Jews? Aren't the Gentiles circumcised too? Of the heart. Yeah. Of the heart. So he doesn't say circumcision of the flesh or the heart. He says 
Those of the what? Circumcision. So let's you don't think he's talking about the that's Jews? the church. I think he's talking about the church. So 11, whose mouth must be what? Stop. Stop. And the only way it's going to be stopped is those of you that have the spirit of truth correct those that have the spirit of error. Amen? So, and then he goes into one of them that was that. Let's go down to verse 13. This witness is true. He said, look, guys, this is going to happen. This is happening now. This is going to happen. You're going to have false people amongst the brethren within the church, within the body of Christ. At this time, it wasn't the body of Christ yet, but it was the synagogue and the Jews. Amen. We are Jews also because we have a circumcision of the heart, not the circumcision of the flesh. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith. Rebuke them, meaning when they're in error, when they say there's three gods, then ask them, why does the Bible say the Lord thy God is how many? One. You got to ask that question. There's nowhere in the Bible that you can come up with the word Trinity, but all the churches have accepted that from the Roman church. There's nowhere in the Bible that there's a rapture. But we always say there's going to be a rapture, right? No three God, no rapture. There's always people saying, well, you know, God hung the commandments on the cross. There's nowhere in the Bible. I can show you a hundred times that God, we just saw it in Luke. God is still concerned with the commandments of, of, of God. So we got we to gotta correct those things by scripture, by doctrine, because this is truth. Not what I say, but what you read in this book. Not because LT said it, not because Freddie said it, because the Bible says it. It tells us to correct them sharply. 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and <clears throat> commandments of men that turn away from the truth. One of those commandments was, and I'm not picking on anybody here, so I hope you don't think I'm picking on you when I say this, but one of the commandments was, of men, just a big one was, you can't go to church on the Sabbath anymore. You can't worship God on the Sabbath anymore. You have to do it when? On Sunday. See, Titus saw that already. He saw that coming. And he's trying to correct that ahead of the time. And he's saying, you're more worried about the commandments of men. And it was commanded by the church after Constantine commanded it. They called it Judaizing, if you went, on the Jewish Sabbath which was Saturday, Friday at night to Saturday sundown. And they penalized you up to the penalty of what? Death. So the church was forced to accept the commandments of men, and now we have it as a regular thing in, in, God, in the kingdom, and it shouldn't be there. We need to correct those things. Uh, 15, unto the pure, all things are pure, right? But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They think, most people that are in church on Sunday really think that they're doing God a favor by showing up and going to church. Amen? They really believe that, that thing. Their, their mind is already defiled because they believed all these false prophets that have come into the church. They profess that they know God, but in works, going to church is work. It's something that you do. It's a work unto a ministry. But he says, they profess they know God, but in works, they deny him. He says, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. We say, forget the Sabbath. Here's the Sunday, and we're doing Sunday because it's actually the day of the sun, the venerable day of the sun, the sun God. Heliocentric model. Heliocentric model. Made by the Catholic Church. Well, made by the Catholic Church. You might have to edit some of this. But again, <laughs> it again, I, I just want to give you, Courtney, I'm not picking on you, but I just want to give you, wow. that's what happened. That's why. And, and, and Titus saw this happening ahead of time. Amen? He saw it happen ahead of time because we were hearkening to the commandments of men. When we can pick up the Bible, and the Bible, we just see all through the Bible, keep the commandments of God, keep the commandments of God. We see the last church, keep the commandments of God. And the fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath and keep it what? Holy. All right. So let's go to 2 Timothy. Oh, man, I love it. We're all in the New Testament. People say, well, that was Old Testament, LT. Ah, Luke is in the New Testament. Second Timothy is in the New Testament. Timothy 3, 1 through 13. Anybody want to read? 3, 1 through 18. 
3, 1 through 13. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady minded, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins that led away with diverse lusts. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these that resist the truth, men of corrupt mind, reprobate concerning the faith. For they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all the that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Not only are they deceiving us, sitting in front of all these churches, in front of all these religions, but they're deceived in their own minds. We saw that already in the, the last verse we just read. But let's look at what Timothy just said. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That perilousness is this. Truth has gone out of the world. The Bible talks about famine. And in this case, the famine is what? The Word, the word of God. There's a famine in the Word of God. You got a lot of religions. You got a lot of people sitting there making you happy about what you they say to you. All right in your sin, not calling a divorce a problem and saying that to repent. If, 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 if you got divorced, I'm not picking on you. But at least go back and say to God, I'm sorry for doing something that you hate. Because the Bible says God hates divorce. So if I do something that God hates, don't shouldn't I repent for that thing? Amen? But the church is not telling you to. We need to tell people to. If I commit fornication, fornication is any sexual act outside of marriage. God created marriage. We already went through that. We saw it in the book of Genesis, and we saw it in the New Testament. God created marriage as a symbol of what Jesus the Christ would be to the church, the bridegroom being Jesus Christ, the church being the bride. Amen? So when we do fornicate outside of marriage, it's an abomination to God. We need to quit telling kids, go out there and sow your royal arts or go out there and do this. If you do it outside of marriage, you've offended a holy God and you need to get back right with God and you need to go repent. How great of a gift that we have, the cross. But if we don't use it, whose fault is it? It's ours. But if nobody tells you to use it, you walking around like, oh, I raised my hand in church 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and I said I accept Jesus Christ and I'm good. And you've been sinning for the last 20 years. Call a sin a sin. Quit masking it with all this good music and people telling you, oh, I was in sin and, you know, God came to me and I changed and all that. No, no. We, we, we need to quit making music about sin and start telling people about sin. But let's look at what, what was read to us. So in the last days, so that's another thing. We know we're in the last days because what, 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 who read? Braxton? What Braxton just read to us, does it, do you see that happening today? Yeah. Anybody besides Braxton? Mm -hmm. Do you or do you not see it happening today? Let's look at what, what he says. Two, for men should be lovers of themselves. Are men and women not lovers of themselves? Yeah. We can't even take care of our own kids. It just kills me. I heard today I was abused by my father. I was abused by my stepfather. I was abused by my mother. I, we can't even take care of the children that God give us. And even if we take care of the children, we're too busy taking care of ourselves to really be parents and raise them up in the fear and admonition of God. And we don't do it not only because... We don't. We don't do it a lot of times because we don't want our children to know that we're outside of the will of God. 
But here, men will be lovers of themselves. Covetness, what is that? That's a commandment, right? Thy shall not what? Covet. Boast, boasters, proud, another. Blasphemers, what is that? Someone that speaks wrongly against the word of God or God. Disobedient, what is what is the sixth commandment? Or the fifth commandment? Say, whoa. The fifth commandment? Honor that mother. That's that, that he's covering it. All right. Well, Disobedience to parents, <laughs> unthankful and unholy. All these things you can you can just take the commandments and apply them right there. <clears throat> Slap them right there. And we see that happening today in the world. Everything that Paul, this is Paul speaking to Timothy. Paul is going to his death. He's in prison and he's going to be killed. He's going to have his head cut off. And he's talking to Timothy and he's trying to keep Timothy on the right path. So he said, you're going to see these things in the last days. There's going to be perilous times. And we already see these things without natural affection. What is that? Without natural affection also. What is that? Homosexuality. It could be. Yes. Could be, right? When, when I when I have unnatural affection, it's not having affection or certain affections, un, not like the way God gave them, gave created me to be, right? I'll, I'll just cover everything with that. Truth breakers, what's that? False witness. That's the commandment too. False accusers. That's there. You go back to the commandments again. Incontinent, fears, despisers of those who do good. Amen. That's what they did with Jesus. They despised him because he told them the truth. He brought light into the world. Men hated the light. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure. Are we not lovers of pleasure in the world right now? Yeah, we are. More than lovers of God. Not only you, you love pleasure more. Some people can't even stay in church if they go, if there's a football game and their team's playing. Right. Think about that. This is God. You're in God's house and you get up, excuse yourself. Sometimes don't even excuse yourself. Walk out of God's house to go to a football game. I'm just, I'm on, a, I'm on my soapbox. Forgive me, but I'm, it pisses me off. Can you raise your hand on your way out? That get that man a towel. Do that. Get that uh, man a towel. Yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm, I, lovers of pleasure more than God. Think about that. I mean, we can go so many ways with that. Your girlfriend says, or your boyfriend says, I don't want to go to church today. So you sit there and lay in bed with your boyfriend all day, fornicating. Think about that. I can't go to God's house. He kept you all week. And you can't stop on Friday night because I got paid. And I got to go party and go to the club. Think about that. You can't give up one day that God says, remember, so he acknowledges to everybody that he is God. You can't give that one Friday up because you are in love with the pleasure that you're going to have that Friday, whether it's going to the club, going out to eat. You can't get into a steakhouse on a Friday night. I'm glad I don't have to go on a Friday night because you can't get in a steakhouse in San Antonio on a Friday night. I'm just saying, pleasure. Love is a pleasure more than God. Having a form of godliness, that's, well, you know, I went to church Sunday. How was it? What you learn? Do you think you covered because you went to church Sunday? What if that's a false prophet that you, that's teaching you? Hmm? I'm just saying. Denying the power thereof. And then he tells you, he admonishes Timothy, of such, do what? Turn away. Go somewhere else. Leave that church. Leave that fellowship. Leave those people. But we don't. We oh, that's, I like my church. I like my pastor and the choir's good. And you know, leave. Timothy said, get out. Leave. For of this sort are they which creep into the houses and, and lead captive silly women. Now, women are two things in the book. Spiritually, women's what? The church, physically women is flesh or women. So be careful when you see that woman woman in the Bible. Silly women led away with diverse lust. Led away from what? Led away from the truth of God. Amen? False prophets. Seven, ever learning, 
and that's how we know who it is, but never able come to come to the knowledge of truth. Always learning. I mean, you got people so God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and I'm supposed to be impressed. That's the first thing you should learn about the gospel. Right? What else do you know? What's the fifth commandment? What's the eighth commandment? What's the ninth commandment? What's, give me five commandments. Now, Janies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Not only do they, you go to tell them about the Sabbath, you show it to them, they resist it. Well, I like church on Sunday. I'm a deacon. Well, I like church. I'm a leader. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Bible study leader, so I, I, I like my church on Sunday. God, God just told you through Paul, get out of that. And you say to God, oh, no, I'm not going to go. I, I, I like my pastor, so I'm going to stay. Who, who are you serving? Your pastor or God? Amen. But thou fully knows my doctrine. You know the gospel. Or Timothy knew the gospel because Paul taught him, right? He knew, you know my doctrine. Who's Paul? Well, who was Paul's doctrine? What was Paul's doctrine? Christ. Right. Christ. Paul, we remember we read on the other Bible study, read that Paul gave us all the doctrine for salvation, right? We read that in uh, Acts. Sorry. So we see, and not only did he give you doctrine, but manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity. These are things that should identify us in the church. Not these things over here that we just read, but starting in 10. Purpose. We should have a purpose. What is our purpose? Convict people of their sin and turn them toward Jesus Christ. That's purpose. Faith. Faith that what Jesus did on the cross, he was the Messiah and he can free us from our sin. Long suffering. Meaning, if Jesus takes longer than you are on this earth, you're going to suffer whatever this earth has to have, and but you're going to continue to teach the doctrine. Amen? Charity. Charity, the greatest charity you can do is give someone eternal life by pointing them to Jesus Christ. Amen? And we got, we got physical needs too, but we're talking spiritually. Persecution. If you're not persecuted, look, why, why is somebody saying something's wrong with John? Hmm? Why is somebody not saying something's wrong with Richard? I tell you, I don't have that problem. I have a lot of people say something's wrong with me. So I don't have that problem, but Someone should persecute you because they don't want to know the truth. And if you're telling them the truth, they're going to have a problem with you. I got more people have a problem with me, people in my family, people that I love, people outside of my family. I'm cool until they find out, oh, you keep the Sabbath? Oh, you keep the commandments of God? Oh, you think there's only one God? Oh, you don't believe in the rapture? All of a sudden, now I got problems. I'm, and I'm in good company because Paul had the same issue. Affliction, they hadn't got me yet. If I disappear, please, y'all start looking for me. <laughs> Something happened to me. You know, that, 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 that second thing came there, affliction came, which came unto me, came up to Paul, so it should come up at Antioch in Iconum, at Lystria, what persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. That's our faith. Not only can he deliver you from sin, but he can deliver you from whatever persecution you're under. If someone at work says, well, you know, we don't really want you to keep the Sabbath. We need you to come do this. You need to tell them, well, I'm really, I'm really a biblical man, a man of God, and I really believe I have to keep the Sabbath and, and see what happens to you. He might say you have to come. Then you got to deal with God with that. But I guarantee you he's going to look at you different. Yay. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, not can be or might be, that word is S-H-A-L-L, -L. shall what? Suffer persecution. It, that's, this is Paul telling Timothy and us, if these things are happening in your life, you, you're, you're doing pretty good. I can't tell you you're doing everything, but you're, you're, you're going down the right path. If you go to church every Sunday and everybody loves you and everybody loves you at work and everybody's doing what you're doing, you're going through the wide gate, right? And none of these things are happening to you. That should be a sign to you. But here we go. But, 13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. False prophets. We see that happen. They deceived all them people that ran up to the Capitol, got them to commit felonies, 
And then came back and said, well, you know, God, God got stopped by Satan. Satan went to heaven. Some preacher actually got up and said, the only reason Trump didn't make president was because Satan himself went to heaven and stopped God from making that happen. Do you believe that? Do you believe Satan has power over God? I don't. No. And then you turn around and you convince all these. I, I felt bad because you had all these church people with Jesus signs and God signs running into the Capitol, rioting in the daytime. And the Bible itself is clear. It says, don't riot in the daytime. But did the preacher read that to him? Did the prophet read that to him? You don't suppose, you're not supposed to be riding. You represent God. You don't represent America God, uh, America before God. You represent God. I worked for the government, but the government wasn't my God. Amen? I, I made it through last week without a scratch, but it wasn't the government that did it. It was God. I know who my Redeemer is. All right. Isaiah, what time is it? Uh, give, give me 10 give me 10 15 more minutes and we'll be done i got three more verses to catch us up and then we'll we'll, we'll stop at ezekiel 13 17 23 isaiah 55 isaiah another prophet of god i don't believe in major prophets or minor prophets so you'll never hear me say that and if i do please correct me uh, i don't believe i believe everything that god said through his prophets is major and he gave it to us for understanding so I would never call one major and one minor. And if I do, it's by mistake because I came up in religion. Uh, 55, 1 through 11. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Uh-oh, church has a problem. Wherefore, do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor is for that which satisfy not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ears and come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant. We already got that one. With you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to people, a leader, and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One, not Holy Three, the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Don't highlight that, because there's going to be a time where you're not going to be able to find truth, and you're not going to be able to find God. We're getting close to that. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. That's why I say repent. We got to tell people what sin is. He doesn't mind giving you a pardon, but if you don't ask for it by repenting, you're not going to have it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth bud, and it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in, the, in things thereunto I send it. A lot, of, a lot of stuff said right there. We can do a whole Bible study on that, but I'm going to try to break it down real quick for you. First, wherefore, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? We're talking about spiritual bread, things that are going to nourish the spirit. Oh, can you check it out? Thing, thank you. Things that's going to nourish the spirit. That's what he's talking about, spiritual bread. Why are you sitting up in these churches? Why are you sitting under these religions and you're not learning nothing? They're not feeding your spirit. They're not bringing you closer to, to God. They're not sanctifying you. They're not separating you out of the world. Because if you're not separated out of the world, you can't be sanctified. And you're not a saint. And if you're not a saint, you ain't going to heaven. You're going to hell. And there's no easy way for me to put that. 
Amen? You got to be different. But you won't eat the bread from heaven. You'd rather pay. Why? why is, look, at, look at verse 1. Everybody goes to church tithes and these, these religions, and they make these men and women rich. No offense, but the Catholic Church is one of the richest nations on the earth, is the Catholic Church. They pillaged every continent on the face of the earth. And they, they, they actually made a lot of money from the slave trades, all of them. And if you don't believe me, just look up Pope Nicholas V and you'll see. He signed an edict that said, go enslave every dark person from Portugal all the way to the Cape of Africa and then bless the church with the proceeds thereof. Amen? Go look it up. Why do we do this? Why do we, why do we empower them with wealth? Why do we empower them? If, if you still don't know that you have to keep the commandments, if you still don't know what, the, what we just read, the Lord thy God is what? One. Right there in verse five. The bottom of verse five. Know not these shall run into these because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel. Not Holy Three of Israel, Holy One of Israel. And then it says, Six, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and upon our God for he will abundantly pardon. That's repentance. We need to teach repentance. He came in the flesh so he can experience what we experience in the flesh. God, the Lord, came in the flesh of my Lord and he experienced what we experienced in the flesh. And then he died on the cross so that we didn't have to have an eternal sin nature. Amen? Mm -hmm. so, so shall my word be, don't miss this, so shall my word be, God talking, that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. If God said Trump will be president, well, will he be president based on this verse? Yes. All right. He's not. Go back and research it for yourself, and you, you'll be surprised at some of the false prophecies. Amen. Let's go to Ezekiel, another prophet, a uh, couple of books over, three books over. we got two more verses we'll look at, and we'll go for the night. Ezekiel 12, 17 to 28. Somebody read? <laughs> I got you. Go ahead, John. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, Thou shalt eat their bread with carefulness, and drink their water with astonishment, that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities there that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. 17 through 20, right? 28. Oh, sorry. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any, I'm sorry, for there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel. The house of Israel. Say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, 
there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord. If I said it, it's going to happen. You ain't got to wait 100 years. All this prophecy, two years from now, 10 years from now, all these people that are telling you this are false prophets. God is telling Ezekiel to tell you false prophets. But if I say it, it's going to happen. A couple of things I want to hit on. Son of man, man, eat thy bread with quaking and drink thy water with trembling. That's the spirit of God. That's the word of God. So when you're dealing with scripture, how should you deal with it? Carefully. Carefully. You should be scared of it. This is God. We're reading God here. This is God in writing. Don't just read over it and, and just not acknowledge it. Study to show thyself approved. Read the word. When you're reading the word, you, you have to understand if you're wrong, there's consequences to that, not only for you, but for your seed, for your family, for everybody. So when you are studying the word of God, study it with fear. Fear is the beginning of what? Wisdom. The whole relationship with God starts with fear. It ain't happy, happy, joy, joy. It ain't singing and praise. It's fear. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. What did uh what was it David or Solomon that said the conclusion of all things is what fear God Solomon, Solomon fear God same thing that Ezekiel saying right here quit acting like he's some grandfather when you come before God you you you're gonna change <laughs> let me tell you when when you really come before God whether it's judgment or not judgment it's not going to be a great experience. I see all these people in church raising their hand, asking for God to come. I don't want God to come. I'm not ready yet. I'm still working on me. I'm still trying to get me right. I hope he tarries for a while. I'm still trying to get my wife right. I'm still trying to get my kids right. I'm still trying to get the people I love in my life. You guys, we're all, I'm trying to get all of us on the same page. I ain't sitting here telling him rapture me because the body Bible says to be absent of the body is to be what? present with the Lord and then judgment, <laughs> right? So that, that, that quick, hey, we're with Jesus, judgment. And if I'm not right, uh-oh, uh-oh, right? So we can, we, we, we can cheer all we want. I don't cheer when somebody is telling me God's coming or I'm going to God. I don't cheer when I do funerals and people say, well, I want you to tell everybody my son's in heaven or my daughter's in heaven, my father. I can't put your family in heaven. I'm not God. I didn't die for you. But I can tell you nobody's in heaven that God doesn't. The Bible says flesh and blood has not indwelled the heaven. The only flesh and blood that is in heaven is the flesh and blood that came down from heaven. And who is that? Christ. I can't put nobody in heaven. Amen. And really, you don't want nobody in heaven unless they're right with God. Amen. So we got to deal with God from a quaking standpoint. We got to be, we have to be in fear. Eat your bread with fear and shaking. And then we go down to uh, these false prophets, 23. Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord God, 23, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. That's the church. But saying to them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. So if I fall asleep and, I, and God comes to me and say, hey, you know what, LT, to, uh, 10 days from now or a year from now, I'm going to do this. False. Not, not, not happening anymore. God's saying that's not happening anymore. Not prophesying that way anymore because too many false prophets in the world. Four, four, uh, 25, for I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious church, <laughs> I just love the fact that me and God are on the same page with this one. O rebellious church, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, said the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel, the church, say the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore, say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged any more. 
Somebody tells you it's going to happen, four blood moons, five blood moons, and this is going to happen. You, know, you don't have to believe that. You don't have to be afraid of that prophet because the word of God says that's not going to happen. I have spoken, shall be done, said the Lord God. One more and we're done. 13, 1 through 16. Somebody want to read? Is he go 12 still? Yes. Or is he go 13? Uh, is, is he go 13, 1 through 16. Okay. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them, that it prophesy, prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear, O the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have not seen nothing. O Israel, that prophets are like foxes in the, de the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel, to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the world, the word. Have ye, seen, have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord hath, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity, and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity, and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even, even because they had seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Saying unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing where, wherewith ye have daubed it? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with the stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger and great house stones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have bedaubed it with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus I will accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar, and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that have it. To wit, the prophets of Israel with prophecy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord. There's God. no peace for the church. If you're in a church that's saying peace, peace, there's no peace for the church. Either God's a liar, or there's no peace for the church. Amen? Not in this world. Why? Because in this world is, the who's the prince of this world? Satan. Satan. So there's no no church that's standing on the word of God, the world is going to deal with. If you say a homosexuality is wrong, somebody's going to have a problem with it. If you say abortion is wrong, somebody's going to have a problem with it. If you say a divorce is wrong, somebody's going to have a problem with it. If you say covetousness is wrong, somebody's going to have a problem with it. If you say someone's a liar, somebody's going to have a problem with it. Well, you can tell a white lie. Ain't no such thing of a white lie, even if it's a white person that says it. Just like there's no difference of a black lie if a black person says it. It's still a lie. There's a lie. No such thing as white lie. Don't let someone tell you that. You're going to hell because the Bible says all liars. You don't categorize them as white, black, purple, green. He says all liars will have their place in the lake of fire, which is hell. Amen? And if I don't tell you that, then I'm, I'm not telling you what you need to know not to do it. All right. Four, O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the desert, meaning... Anytime you go out into a desert and you look at it, take a picture of it, whatever you want to do, a mind picture or a photograph picture, come back the next day, is that picture going to be the same? The sand's going to be in the same place. No, because of the winds that blow at night in the desert. Every time, every night, it changes. The pastors are like foxes. They're changing. Every time you turn around, as the world changes, as the world says divorce is okay, the, the desert changes. As the world says homosexuality is okay, the pastors say, yeah, it's okay. God loves everybody. Right? It's like a fox. We're reading that uh, verse 4, 13, John, uh, 13, uh, verse 4. Oh, Israel, that prophets are like foxes. What he's saying is the prophecies, the words that are coming out of the mouths of the preachers and the priests, are changing just like the landscape of the desert changes and they're like foxes. Every time the world changes, 
their opinion on something, the church changes its opinion with the world. You got 100 pastors now. Biden says he's Catholic. Then the Catholic Church should deflock him, right? They should, they should run him off. Because God says that homosexuality is wrong. God says abortion is wrong. Biden's for abortion. Bible says, "Thou shall not kill. Biden said, it's all right to kill. Did we just hear Jesus talk to uh, John in the womb? Right? Neither one of them were born yet. One was in Elizabeth. The other one was in Mary. And, and, and John heard Jesus. Thou shall not kill. But the church said, well, you know what? The landscape is changing, so I'm going to preach something different. Verse 4. Five, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedges. Those are when the church is wrong, the men and women of God need to form a hedge around that thing. Wherever it's, it's broken, we need to go with the word of God and fix it. Amen? We need to go up there. We used to say, I don't care what the pastor said. The word of God, the Bible says this, and this is what the word of God means. Right? That's the hedge. This mortar thing, this wall. Let me give you a, 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 a picture, a mind picture. If you go back to Jerusalem before the Romans sacked it in 70 AD, Jerusalem had this huge wall around the whole city, right? And really, if they hadn't had a civil war inside, the Romans would have never been able to get in there. They had enough food for four years. The, the, the Romans had 60,000 soldiers. How long do you think 60,000 soldiers can sit there and wait without running out of food and supplies. Not long. They could have sat there forever. That's why they had a wall around them. But the wall that God is talking about here is the spiritual wall around you. That's the word of God. And when someone breaks that wall or they don't build it up with a true word of God and they build it up with false teaching, that's a wall that's built without mortar. So when something comes against that wall without mortar, what's going to happen to the wall? It's going to tumble over. It's going to tumble over. And that's what the prophet's talking about here when he's talking about walls without mortars, right? And he says, let's, let's go to see what God's against real quick. Therefore, thus say the Lord, verse 8, God, because ye have spoken vanity, you've told me what I want to hear. You're cute. You get up and you preach, and my daddy this, and my mama this, and we this, and I got a Cadillac, and buy me a plain vanity, and see lies, see lies. Therefore, be, behold, I am against you. All these uh, preachers that are prophetic preachers that are preaching money, oh, God wants you to be rich. Did we see Paul say that to Timothy when we read in Timothy? What did Paul say about himself? Was he rich? Was he persecuted? Mm, yeah. All these prosperity preachers that you see, and, and I could name several of them, but I, I, I will. Creflo Dollar. Uh, Kenneth Copeland. Jesse Duplantis. T.D. Jakes. Go look at them. Oh, God don't want you to be poor. That's not what Paul just told Timothy, and Paul just wrote three-fourths of the Bible. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of the people. In other words, when God comes and he's king of kings and lords and lords, guess what's going to happen to these preachers? They ain't going to be in the assembly. They're not going to be there. And what's going to happen to the people that are following these false prophets? They're not going to be there either. Because instead of studying to show thyself approved, instead of filling the hedge and, and, and building the wall with mortar, they're sitting there and they're, they like what they hear and they're not convicted and they don't ever repent and they're going to hell in a handbasket. Just saying. 10, because even because they have seduced my people. See what I'm saying? Ashley has a nice suit and I like the way he talks. Oh, he can sing real good. We have one of those. He sings. I just love to hear him sing. I just come to hear him sing. Really? You're going to hell. Nothing he's singing about is going to convict you. They have seduced my people saying, peace. Oh, everybody's going to be raptured and go to heaven. That's peace. To be with Jesus is peace. To be in the bosom of Christ is peace. And that's what he said. 
and seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there is no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others dubbed it with untampered mortar. Ain't gonna stand. Amen? And we're gonna stop there. Ain't gonna stand. The things that you're being taught by religion is not gonna keep you in that day of the Lord. All right? Not gonna keep you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for bringing us through the storm, Lord. We just ask that you give us all understanding. Help us to go back and read what we read today. And if we miss anything, Lord, bring it back to our attention and help us to give us understanding. And more so, help us to do thy word and not just be hearers of thy word, Lord. Bless all the families in the sound of my voice, Lord. Keep them and send your spirit to be with them, Lord. And these things we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. We'll pick up uh, at Ezekiel 13, 17, 23 next week. Amen. Y'all have a good Amen. week. Thanks, LT. Oh, you're welcome. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Everybody good? Any questions? Courtney, you're good. I'm good. Andy, you're good. I got a question. Go ahead. Earlier, you're talking about going to church on Sundays. The way you think it, you think it's bad to go to church on Sundays? I don't think anything. Like I told y'all when we started this Bible study, I don't know if you were here when I started. I'm just giving you word of God. The Holy Spirit has to move on you which way that you want. Now, I would say this. You're like, you're like one of my sons, so I would say this to you. The, the thing that the last church is doing in the book of Revelations, which is called the remnant church, is keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ, right? That's how we get repentance, right? He died for my sin, so when I sin, I go and I ask for forgiveness of my sin. That's the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the other thing that they're doing is keeping the commandments of God, right? Did I show you that? Did, were you at that Bible study? Let's, I don't go think so. Let's go to the book of Revelations real quick. Okay. Revelation 13. Revelation 13, and we'll start at verse 11. Uh, the beast is the power that, that the dragon gave power. A lot of times that's the church. And behold, another beast come up out of the earth, and it had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now, he wasn't a lamb. Jesus is a lamb. He looked like a lamb, but he wasn't a lamb. He spoke as a dragon. That's Satan. And he, ex he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he does his great wonder so that make fire come from heaven and earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had been wounded by a sword and did live. And he had power to give unto them the image of the beast. The image of the beast should both speak and cause as many that would worship, there's your word right there, many that would worship, not, right, speak and cause as many that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right and their uh, right hand and forehead. So he's causing this beast here is causing us to worship him in a certain way, right? You read what I said, and what happened was the church caused us, like I said earlier, to go to church on Sunday by penalty of death. They called it Judaizing. If we kept the fourth commandment, you follow me? Mm -hmm. So let's look at what happens here. Uh, where is it at? Right here. Go to 1411. Oh, wait a minute. Let's let's go to, let's pick it up at 146. This is what happens to those people that worship the way the beast power, which is a spiritual power, it's Satan's power, and it's it's forming itself as a church. But look at look at what it says here. Here we go. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, coming everlasting gospel, verse 6 of 14. Now he's coming with the everlasting gospel, which has the power to do what? Save you. Has the power to save you. Because this false gospel is coming to the world. So now God is having to send one of his holy angels to us to give us a true gospel, right? To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him he already told you how he wants to be worshiped remember the sabbath and keep it holy right that's how he wants to be worshiped all right him that made heaven and earth and see the fountains of the waters and therefore 
follow another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, fallen. That's the church. It fell in Europe and it fell in, the, in, in America. We'll, we're going to cover this in a Bible study eventually. That great because she made a nation drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication. She made you worship in a way that was against God or not of God, right? That's drinking the wine of fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast or the image of the beast and receive his mark on the forehead and his hand, the same shall drink of the wrath of the wine of God, which is poured out without mixture. This is the only time in the Bible that God's wrath is poured out without mercy. That's what he's saying. He's not going to have mercy on those that are worshiping the way the beast wants you to worship, right? So, so John is seeing all this, and John has an issue because... John and all the disciples have died. Well, not John. John died on the Isle of Patmos, but they have been persecuted. All the disciples died except John. They have been persecuted for teaching the truth of God. So John is having an issue here because he's seen all this thing happen in the last days under judgment. So now he's curious. He's seen this wrath being poured out from God. So he, he has an issue. So 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. That's the smoke of those people worshiping the false God. And they have no rest day or night. Rest is the Sabbath. We have our Sabbath rest on the Sabbath. Nor night for, for who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Here is the patience, okay? This is the church that's going to be saved right here. Very important verse, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Like I told you earlier, saints means sanctified or set, set aside, sanctify saints. No one will enter into the kingdom unless they are saints. They are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. So who's the, who, what is the last church doing? They're keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ unto salvation, which is our sin is being covered by his blood. And they're keeping the commandments of God. What is the fourth commandment? Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy as a sign to you or me, the church, that I am God. And I am the God that created the heavens and the earth and formed you from the dust of the ground and breathed life into you. Right? Does that answer your question? Yes. And that's not <laughs> me. That's the Bible. Right? I don't want it to come from me. Now, you go back and you read those verses and you let the Holy Spirit work on you. But there's going to be two churches in the last days, the remnant church and the, the great church. That great church is actually going to be demonic. The power came from the beast. We always talk about 666. Was that you that asked me about 666? We always talk about 666. 666 is the number of a man, man. the man that leads this church. Many men have led this false church, and this false church has led many men to their death. We're going to learn about that. If you, if you research the Dark Ages, it was a church that killed 50 million Christians, the church, because they wouldn't worship the way the church wanted them to worship. They wanted to worship according to the word of God, and the church said, no, and so we don't want you to worship on the Sabbath, we want you to worship on Sunday, which is the venerable day of the Lord. I mean, of the sun. I'm sorry. The venerable day of the sun. The sun god. That's where you get Sunday. The sun god. We call him Apollo. What's some other names we call the sun god? Yeah. Ra. Amun Ra. Amun Ra. Apollo. Baal. Balaam. Bain. All, all these names. All right. So what I gave you there were the verses that shows you two different forms of worship. The beast power changed it. Uh, I'll text you something you can, or I'll look it up and I'll send it to you. It's a council of Laodicea. It's an ecumenical council where the church changed the law of God, right? It changed the Sabbath from Saturday, Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown, and it changed it to Sunday, the venerable day of the sun. It did it at an ecumenical council, and it made it church law to do it. What I just read you told you that was going to happen. If you want to see it earlier than Revelations, go to the book of Daniel. I'm not going to do it today because it's a whole other Bible said. I mean, you can get together anytime you want to. The book of Daniel, Daniel sees what happens in the future. He sees a prophecy, and Daniel says the beast power, 
the power that's empowered by Satan, he, he changes, he's seeking to change two things, days and laws, right? We know the commandments is, is the law of God. And we know the fourth commandment is a day, so that's Saturday versus Sunday, right? So Daniel's already telling us that peace power is going to come into the world and it's going to seek to do this thing. And we're going, to go, we're going to do a Bible study on Daniel, and we're going to look, and you're going to be able to identify who the beast power is by the word of God, right? And by what has happened in history. I say the beast power is the Roman church, because the Roman church is who changed the Sabbath, right? And there's a lot of other things in the Bible in Daniel chapter 7 that points to the Roman church, one being the Pope. I think me and Courtney have had this conversation already. Okay. All right. Does that answer? Anybody else have any more questions? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Richard, you good? I'm good. You good? All right. Well, we'll see y'all. Thanks for coming. We already prayed. God bless y'all. We'll talk to you mañana. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I I I will probably see most of them. There. Yeah, well, good. Definitely by yourself. Hey, yes, sir. Gym tomorrow. Two thirty. Hey, you got me. At five. Oh, you know I'm off, bro. Hey, hey, I'm on legs tomorrow. Oh, uh, I did legs today. Yeah, I kind of switched it. I got turned around, kind of switched it up, and did it today. So we can get together Friday and do something. Chest and arms. Chest and arms it is. You want to go at 3.30 on Friday? Uh, no, because I've got to work out. Yeah. What time are you going to get there? 4.30? You can't get there at 2.30? No, I can. But uh, DJ, DJ wanted to work out on Friday, too, but he didn't get off till 3.30. Uh, uh, he can get, get there. He, 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 get he can get in. I got, I got my wife at 4.30, so yeah. we can only get an hour in if we do it at 3.30. DJ is weak anyway. DJ is weak. <laughs> All right, man. We'll see y'all later. All right, later. DJ is weak anyway. <laughs>